Hello everyone, I am Beth Golden. Welcome to my channel. All right, you guys, I'm super stoked because literally this just dropped and within less than two days, I had it in my hot little hands and I ordered it. I actually ordered it from scrapbook.com and it got to me that fast. Um, I ordered it about three hours after it was released. So today I just wanna play with it. Um, the new, and if you don't know what this is, this is the new color out of the Distress line from um, Tim Holtz and Ranger. It's the Flamingo and I just wanna play with it. I picked up the Oxide, the Glaze, and then also the Oxide Spray. I don't get everything in the line because I don't normally use everything in a line. Um, and I really wanna get this in the Distress ink. I love the ink but I don't want a big one. So I have to wait until it comes out, hopefully in a smaller one. So let's just get started and just do some playing with this. Um, I'm gonna first start off by creating a tag and I'm gonna use this color. And I'm going to also use this stamp foam. This is a new product by Simon Hurley as well. Uh, I saw him do a demo the other day that was pretty cool where he took some die cuts and he just, like laid them out and then he stamped on them. So I thought that I would do that with this. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling Valentine's Day, love, pink, there you go. Uh, so that's why I'm gonna just stick with them, um, with these, this theme for this, this right now. So I'm just going to um, get this kind of laid out and then this is my leftover um foam that i created before so i want to get rid of that design and get the um parts in there all right so you just kind of wait for it to start to go back to its normal shape and then you can use this again these things have been selling out like crazy from what i understand which you know um I'm excited about this product. This is not a new product. I guess there was, this was out 10, 15 years ago. And uh, it was a blue color from what I understand. And Simon Hurley just brought it back, did a gray, which is nice because you can see your ink on it. So pretty cool. And you know that it's ready to be stamped with um, when, it is back to a flat surface. So we're almost there. I think it's cool it comes in a pack of four and it's less than $5. <laughs> so I'm all about that. And I will have everything I'm using linked down below in the description block, um, block if you are interested. All right. Almost there. I think we're there. All right, so that's nice and hot now and melted. So I'm just going to take this and stamp it in. And if we hate it, guess what? We can redo it. We're not out anything. Let's see here. Oh, I think I like that. Okay, so this is my little tag that I want to use to create this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ink it up with my Distress Oxide. First time using it, so exciting. Ooh, so beautiful. It looks, it looks like a flamingo, like a yard flamingo. Look at that. All right, how cool is that? All right, so I am just going to take this and I think I like it over there. Pop it on right like that. And I'm gonna flip it and press. I just wanted to make sure I got it lined up okay. And voila, there's our cute little tag with some hearts in it. I do not want this to move at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry it and then I'm gonna put a little bit of glaze over it. And what the glaze does is it um, 
really brings some luster to it, especially if you did get it wet and you get that chalky look and you don't necessarily want a chalky look. So I'm going to use my Micro Distress Glaze. Make sure your fingers are clean before you dip your hand in this. Um, it is recommended that you use one of the sponge tip applicators. It fits perfectly in here, but for me, that just creates... I just use up too much product. This is like an $8 little jar. So I just like to make sure that my fingers are nice and clean. And then I just go all the way in and rub it on through like so. And then you're gonna wanna take a clean towel and wipe off the excess. All right, now that's nice and sealed. And we can go on from here and create our card. So for this card, I took a piece of white card stock. I cut it down the middle. It's an eight and a half by 11, creating a 5.5 5 by eight and a half panel. And then I scored it down the middle. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I just want to color the background. But for this particular one, I'm gonna go ahead and actually use some spun silk. And I'm just going to wipe it down like so. All right, so that's the spun silk, and if you want to see a difference in the color, this is the the um, the flamingo. So there is a definite difference. Now I don't have a glaze on this spun silk, and I haven't dried it. So let me do that, and then we'll come back and take a look at the the similarities and differences. I did go ahead and put a glaze on top of that, and now there you go. So, and I misspoke. It's not spun silk. It is called spun sugar. I am sorry for the um the wrong name the, so that there you go that's that's the um flamingo and that is the sugar this one definitely i'm it just really looks like a pink flamingo that you put in your yard i love it all right so to create the background on this i'm not quite done yet i actually want to take this chevron type stamp here the, um um stencil i should say and I'm left-handed, so I gotta rotate it over. And I'm going to use some mint tape to hold it down once I get it lined up. All right, really like it, but this needs to dry and we'll work on our little tag that we're gonna put in the center. And we'll come back to this at the end of the video to give this glitter some time to dry. You guys, I'm cleaning up right now before I move on to my next segment. And I don't normally show you as I clean up because let's face it, it's boring. But I did wanna share with you this best cleaner ever I got from Scrap Perfect. Um, this is the first time I've ever used it and I am so impressed with how it works. It really gets everything up, including like my glitter had started to dry right there. And uh, it just takes it, it just gets it up. I mean, I can't, I can't even believe how awesome this product is and I just wanted to share that with you really quick in case you're looking for a cleaner that works on your stamps as well as on some of your surfaces because this is so awesome you do want to rinse it with water after you um after you do get done using it however and this is totally dried on like I wasn't able to get it off with my regular cleaner However, what I like to do is as I'm stamping, because sometimes I'll get it on my hands, and this is safe for your hands, is I'll actually rub a little bit of the cleaner into my hands as I stamp, and then I will go back through and uh, just rub my hands after each stamp session, wipe it on a paper towel, and then just go on to the next, and when I'm done, I just rinse it with regular water. So I just thought I would share that with you. You can use it on your stencils, on your hands. It takes off, um, like I said, the archival ink. I've been really impressed with everything I've used it on so far. 
let's finish up this tag for this card and then we'll uh, go back to it at the end of the video when the glitter's had some time to dry. I want it to pop a little bit, obviously, on the card. And since it is a pink card, I think a black border would be nice. So I'm just gonna ink the edges up right now with this archival ink. And using that same heart die, I actually had some leftover paper that I had made using Simon Hurley ink. I had spread it out, put some water on some white cardstock, and then used a um, gel medium to a, to put the Dina Wakely collage word paper over it. So I had a leftover, a couple leftover little bits, and I just ran them through my die cut machine with the hearts and I made some little embellishments that I thought would be really great to use with this video on all the cards or most of the cards I should say. So I'm just going to ink up that little edge as well and I have this sentiment from a sassy and crafty stamp set. I fall for you every single day so I thought that that would be cute to do on here as well. And now I just have to go ahead and figure out where I want to put everything on my tag. And since it is going to go on the card, I can, you know, it doesn't, I, I like it to fall off of the tag. I think that that's kind of cool. And just a rule of thumb, whenever you're working on a, um, any kind of surface and you, you have a lot of white space to work with, you're going to want to break up your substrate into thirds. And you're either going to want to focus on the bottom third, the middle third, or the top third. And I always like to focus on the bottom third. That's kind of my thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop this heart right there. And then I'm going to pop this sentiment right about there. All right, we're not done with this tag yet, but the rest of the things I have to do with it requ require me to use liquid pearls, which has to dry. So I'd rather get it on the card first. So let's move on to our next card with the new color in the Distress Embossing Glaze. All right, so for this one, I've already gotten it started in that I took this little, um, piece of paper that I actually have created, um, kind of like a stencil and a mask. And I just took my Distress Embossing Dabber, filled it in, and then I heat set the embossing glaze on top of it. So I wanted to do a resist technique using the this color, obviously, and then also some of the other colors on it with the Distress Oxide. So I am going to use the Quiche Flamingo. I don't even know if that's how you say it. I think I messed it up. I know. That's what I do. If you've watched me for long enough, you know that I have my own language. And then I'm also going to use um, Spun Sugar and then Worn Lipstick. And how this is going to work is I'm just going to take and I'm going to run the lightest to the darkest So I'm gonna spray it with some water just to kind of activate that oxide. And then I'm going to remove the oxide from the heart that I embossed with the Flamingo Glaze. It will act as a resist. Uh, 
as I heat set that, my glaze did start to melt again and it got sticky to the touch. So just keep that in mind before you move forward. I am also going to lay down the, um, my, um, micro glaze on top of this to bring back some of that luster. But before I do that, I actually want to go ahead and ink the edges to make it pop. And I also want to outline that heart. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and start to assemble our card and I accidentally put my watermark on the wrong one. I actually want to do this card long ways. I really like this sentiment for this. I made a wish and you were there. I think it would be really nice just right in the middle of that heart. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to add a little bit of these onyx pearls and um, these will take some time to set up and dry. Really cute, simple little card. Now we're gonna move on to another technique in which I stamp with a candied apple and then I put the glaze on over it. And you're gonna be able to still, it's gonna change the look of the candied apple color. However, it's not gonna be entirely pink like a normal embossing powder would do. This is a glaze. This is simply a way to kind of think of it like glazing a cake. If you put frosting on a cake, if you put vanilla frosting on a chocolate cake, you're not going to see the chocolate underneath of it. However, if you have that same chocolate cake and you put a vanilla glaze over it, you're going to see the glaze, but you're also going to see the chocolate through it. And that is what makes these embossing glazes so cool. So I'm going to use the candied apple right now with this these cute little lips and I'm going to throw this flamingo glaze over it.
So I'm going to do that same technique that I did on the previous card in which I remove the ink, I lay it out and then I use this as a resist to remove. But I'm only, I'm gonna use worn lipstick and I'm gonna do the dip technique on this. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of worn lipstick. And then I also want to use some spun sugar And we'll pop some of this flamingo in as well. So I'm just going to spray this down, some water just to get it to move. And then I'm going to just do And I really like how that looks, so I'm going to stop there. And I'm just going to remove the excess off of the top, which will also remove it from the lips. I want to go ahead and ink the edges of this as well as my sentiment. And then I'm going to take my flamingo and I'm going to create this little tag by just running my Distress Oxide over it. All right, now I'm going to take and put my little kiss right there. I'm gonna put it more towards the end of the tag because I wanna take this heart, and I think I wanna do the heart like off up over like that, and then do another one up here like so. Once again, I do want to put some distress glaze, the micro distress, the micro glaze on this. Now, oh, interesting, I wasn't expecting this, but when I did it, it kind of moved some of that archival ink around, which makes me think that I needed to make it sit up a little bit longer, but it doesn't bother me that much. However, if you don't want your archival ink to move, you might want to skip that step or you might want to wait for it to set up and dry completely. So that's a simple cute little card and whenever you're using little teeny tiny bits of scraps and things like that and you decide to make an embellishment if you just use a little bit of foam tape or pop dots behind them it really just jazzes it up all right so we're going to go on to the fourth and final card and then we're going to circle back around to that first card that we started with and finish it off all right so for this one i'm actually going to use this center right here and I'm going to use a little bit of pixie spray on it because the technique that I'm going to use is going to be this distress dabber and I want to play with the this the flamingo and I love what it looks like with a pretty blue so I want to create a card that is definitely more my style and I'm just going to center this up in the middle And from here, I'm gonna take my Distress Embossing Dabber and I'm just going to go off. Like so. Technique, and this time I'm going to use the broken china.
I know it looks like a hot mess right now, but we are not done. I want to take this right here and I'm actually going to use dun, 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 my flamingo on the inside of it. Um, and I was going to do some other colors with it, but I might just keep it with that flamingo color. Um, I don't know. I'll see. But I wanted to play with the Distress Oxide um, sprays. But I want to make sure I seal this up so if it goes splatters out, it's not going to get everywhere. Granted, I can wipe it up, but this is just good to hold it in place as well. Ooh, that's cool. I love the splatter look like that. So I think I am going to throw some more color on it. Oh, I love that. It's going to dry that and then I'm going to go in with some picked raspberry. And I'll go in with some warm lips, worn lipstick. And we're gonna call that good for now with that, but I'm not done yet. So let me remove that. I'm going to take my right paint over pins. You could use that black pin again, but I just want to really make this heart pop. And I'm going to go over the outside edge with the starfish, which is a pink, and then the inside with a mermaid. And I'm just going to freehand it to the best of my ability. take this and put it on my card base I want to put I want to make this heart glossy so I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid gloss to it this is to dry of course but what you can do is I kind of think it would be fun to like drop that little piece just right in the middle and where it lands it lands and just let the glossy accent hold it and then i can put this down here at the bottom and i didn't go outside all the way of the edges in case it was going to run a little bit so i'm pretty happy with that and i'm just going to put that down there on the bottom let's go back and finish up that first card that we started with so this one's pretty much almost done. I just got to assemble it. That's pretty much dry. And I'm just going to take and use, pop it up right there in the middle. we go I do notice that it is cut a little bit off here so I'm gonna go back through after these have had time to dry and just put it through my trimmer again and it'll be just fine all right so one thing that I noticed is I'm not really loving all the placement of those pearls I think I put too many down so I'm gonna go through and just swipe that and see if I can just remove it So I wanted you to see my boo-boo because I think it's important that you realize that sometimes when you create, you may make mistakes and you can go through and just try to remove it and call it good. I don't really mind the black smudge marks because there's black on it. it. gives it more of a, you know, I can take that and just 
kind of push it through. So there's more oopses to make it kind of look like it's intentional. All right, you guys, I certainly hope you had fun with this video. I know that I did. I always like to play with my new products like that, and I'm never really taking you on the journey. Um, I didn't, I kind of had a, a thought process to it, but I wasn't entirely sure. So thank you so much for joining me on that little journey. If you want are interested in any of the products that I have used, they are listed down below in the description box. And I have to tell you, scrapbook.com is really good on their shipping. So I'm gonna try to link through to their store as much as possible because they also have excellent sales a lot of the time. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.